Hello there folks, so um, welcome back to the vlog series and I'm going to talk about Essen and how I spent my time there, what I did and what not and so on. I didn't want to do the vlog uh, before all the games arrive but eventually I thought like whatever I'm going to do that in two parts because eventually um, there are so many games that I can show you. And I will show you some games that I brought to with me in my luggage. And I just want to talk about Essence overall, what I did, what I, who I met and so on. So there's, I think, not much to talk about, but it's still interesting. So this will be a part one of the Essence Spiel um, 2017 vlog series video. And I know, let's just start. Uh, it's not a prepared video. I'm just gonna talk about what comes up to my mind. So, first of all, I went there on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday early morning. I didn't sleep um, for the whole night um, because my flight was very, very early. I had to wake up like at 3 a.m. Uh, on like from Monday to Tuesday, I had to wake up on uh, 3 a.m. on Tuesday. So I was like, whatever, I'm not gonna sleep on Monday. And uh, as I woke up uh, 10 a.m. On Monday so I didn't sleep for the whole day and then I kind of tried to sleep on a plane but eventually so eventually I arrived to uh, Essen and um, when I arrived there I arrived at the hotel and before that uh, in the airport and while waiting for the train I uh, talked to uh, Paul um, from uh, Gaming Rules and we we're like should we do something on Tuesday and he said like let's meet and let's go to to the halls to see how people build up booths and maybe talk to different people and so on so eventually yes we we met at the hotel we went uh, there was also Isaac Childress the one who did Gloomhaven so Paul me and Isaac went uh, to the halls to see how people build up the booths and you know it's I've, I've been there before like I mean I've been there on Wednesday usually but it's still cool because you see some people, some are busy, but you still um, see some people who you can talk to. And there's always, you know, there's always problems with, the, with those booths because uh, some games, uh, some people's games don't arrive on time. Uh, some chairs are missing, tables are missing, something is wrong, you know. It's just, just how it is, you know, and it's... I can. I don't want to say it's funny, but it's. You're looking at this, and you understand those people who are on that side of the other side, not the customers, but the ones who provide you with with the for the products, uh, who are working at the booth, and you see their problems, and you kind of understand the other side of that. So that's really cool. But eventually, yeah, uh, we met with um, uh, with uh, David Turchi. Uh, he's, for example, the designer of Anachrony and uh, Days of Fire, Budapest, and so on. So we roamed around the halls, talked to different people. Um, of course, Paul had so many connections and people to talk to. Um, and me and Isaac, <laughs> because Isaac came from uh, US, he had it's a jet lag. He had jet lag. So I was I didn't sleep for for the whole night. So. I was really tired and he had the jet lag. <laughs> we're two together, like we're, we're going around like zombies and then Paul is like, oh, hey there, hey there, talking to all the people and we're like just going uh, the same way as he is. So. But it was really cool uh, to roam around and see some pips and so on. Uh, and also we, uh, we visited the Ludic Creations booth and they wanted to test their escape. They had the escape room uh, small room, like a 10 minutes escape room uh, at their booth. So this, they said like, do you want to try? So I went together with, uh, we, like we went in two, two, two player teams. Uh, Paul uh, went with David and I went with Isaac. And it's, it's again like me and Isaac, like we're both so sleepy. We want to sleep. We want to do something else. And we, in that, we are in that room and they were like, what, what, where, when, what should we, uh, uh, you know, but it was, it was fun, 
the room at Ludic Creation, the escape room at Ludic Creations, they had really neat puzzles. There were some like problems of logic a little bit, but eventually a really neat thing. So a great thing that they did. So that was cool. I eventually went to, uh, uh, we met with some other people. Uh, I don't remember everyone, but I mean, so I'm sorry, I'm so terrible with names, uh, but uh, we went to a Korean restaurant. Um, it's the first time I, I go to a Korean restaurant, so I'm trying to, you know, try different stuff and different food right now. Um, usually I'm very strict with the food, but who cares? So it was really good food there, a Korean restaurant, so I liked it. So, and after that, uh, we went, I don't remember, eventually at some point we, we met John uh, from, uh, John from John Gets Games and we went to, to have a, a drink and just talk and such, so it was a nice Tuesday and I was extremely tired, but I went to sleep quite, um, I didn't go to sleep right away because I waited for uh, my uh, friend from and co-worker, uh, previous co-worker, uh, Piotr, um, and yeah, he, um, I was lucky to get in a roommate because it's quite expensive to, to have a hotel. We, I'm, I was in Motel 1, so it was quite expensive to have the, whole, the room there from Tuesday to, to basically Monday. So uh, it was uh, really good to split the cost. Anyway, I had to wait for him. He arrived at 11 p.m. after 11 p.m., something like that, like really. So I just wanted to wait for him. So I had a drink and so on, uh, talk to people. Uh, that was really cool. Uh, we were at the bar somewhere, I remember what. Anyway, uh, that, was, that was a really cool day. Uh, then Wednesday, uh, it was a press day, of course. We, from the morning, we went to the press events. Uh, this time, I don't know why all the material, like, the press event is in German, um, as usual. So I was like, whatever. But usually they have all those other papers that they give you, the, the thing they give you, it's in English. But mine was in German, I don't know. So I was like, just, oh, who cares? I'm just gonna uh, sit in my phone and do something. I just, I, I like watching the trailer that they show about Essence. So that's that's the only thing. So anyway... Eventually, uh, <laughs> um, eventually we there is um, a Zoe um, from Twitter, and we tried to <laughs> we tweeted each other like we're sitting here, and she's like I'm sitting here. Let's try to find you, and we tried to find each other. It was like a game, like um, it was weird, but it was uh, quite funny. So um, oh yes, I. Um, I met the, uh, David Luja, uh, the Happy Luja from, yeah, uh, on, a, on a press event. Last year we were also sitting together, so uh, like a tradition already. Anyway, so we did that. Then uh, in Hall A1, uh, 1A, yes, 1A, uh, there is that smaller exhibition where basically it's like a miniature, I mean, like m mini mini Essen, basically. It's it's uh, just there are no booths, but but uh, the different games and almost all the games are set up on different tables, uh, stands, and so on. And you're roaming around only the press. It's for the press day, so you can roam around and see all the games and components, film, and so. I was quite tired and I didn't feel like I want to film much but I filmed the Space Freaks uh, from Lauta Pellet and um, Stronghold Games uh, so at least something and we just roamed around I talked to people I looked at different games and uh, I met uh, people from Dice Tower Sam uh, Tom and so on so yeah just talked to uh, talk to them and uh, talk to the other peeps and so Eventually, uh, after roaming around this small mini Essen thing hall, I went upstairs and just roamed around the halls overly just to see the other peeps. And I went to hall seven to see the dice tower booth as well. And I don't, I don't remember. I think it was on Tuesday when they were playing the Dragons, Dragons Gate, Gates, Dragon, Dragons Gate College, something like that. Anyway, that's a game from NSK Games. Uh, but on one of the days, I think it was Wednesday, yes, Wednesday, 
uh, towards the um, more towards the evening. Um, I went there to the dice store booth and they were setting up the uh, Santa Maria. Uh, Eric, uh, Kenny and Sam. And so they're like, oh, there's one place free. Do you want to play? I'm like, okay, let's play. So I played Santa Maria with them. Um, a nice game, a nice game. Um, I pre-ordered the copy before I played it. So, But uh, I'm, I'm a, little bit, a little bit curious if... if I will like it more or maybe might like fall through. I mean, Santa Maria is kind of, it has the tiling aspect, which I like, but it has this, and it has this cool mechanic of um, dice roll or column activation by, by dice, but it has so many other small bits. And eventually as the time goes by, as the turns go by, you, have more and more options which means that the game goes longer and longer each turn goes longer and longer so it, it kind of feels like it's from not AP prone game it becomes an AP prone game further into the game so and that's my concern uh, because if I'm thinking of some groups or some people I'm, I'm gonna play it with then it might be a concern for me it might overstay its welcome and it's very abstract. Uh, it's yeah, it's extremely abstract. I mean, like you do this for something, and you put this token to do this, and this. So there are quite a few small details. It's not a it's not a heavy game. I mean, it's not a heavy euro type game, but it's still there are small bits and things and such that I feel like it could have been a little bit maybe more streamlined. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know, I have to try it again, but I wasn't so, like, I wasn't extremely ex excited after I played this, like, wow, this is, no, no. Uh, this is a good game, it's a good game. It's, um, yeah, there, there are some really cool uh, design choices, but eventually. Anyway, so Santa Maria. Then, uh, after uh, we, we finished Santa Maria, they were going to, the, the Dice Tower team, they were going to, um, to the dinner. And um, as Z, um, he, he didn't feel well, um, so he wanted to stay at the hotel. And Sam and Tom, I don't remember who called me, but basically they told me like, do you want to come with us? I'm like, okay, I want to I wanna eat, let's go. I'm going to have a dinner with the dice store, cool. So we went, <laughs> and the cool part is that we went to uh, the Korean uh, restaurant yes it was yeah it was first it was korean restaurant so on wednesday went to the same by the way the same korean restaurant and then i got this bim bim bam bim 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 bam whatever you know the the undercooked rice with spices and and meat and i took it with beef and so on and vegetables and i was really really good i liked it very much it was like i wouldn't think that, that i would like such food but it was really really cool i liked it so i and I talked a lot with people and it was really, really cool. I, I enjoyed my time. So we, and I enjoyed the, the people around me. And after that, I think, no, was it, was it after that that we, later in the evening, we went out to, to find the ice cream place. So we found the ice cream place where they have this kind of a spaghetti ice cream. So it's like an ice cream, but it's made like a spaghetti. On top you have this raspberry sauce. It looks like a ketchup, you know, it looks, or tomato sauce. Um, on top they, they uh, have those sprinkles, whatever, of, of uh, white chocolate. So it looks like a Parmesan cheese, you know. <laughs> so it kind of looks like a pasta, but it's, it's an ice cream, basically. With different flavors so Tom uh, thank you so much for for the ice cream by the way so really really cool I, I like the and then after that we went to um, Atlantic Congress Hotel where uh, the Dicer team was located as well and we played the game um, was it on the same or was it on Thursday I don't to be honest I don't remember but at some point I went to play a game with them to, to their hotel. And we played Dead Man's uh, The Bloons. And Dead Man The Bloons is like, um, no, um, it, yeah, somebody says it's like Jamaica. It kind of is, and I didn't like Jamaica. So for me, it was just random race around. I, don't, I didn't care about it. So Dead Man The Bloons has really cool components. It looks cool. The, the, I like the idea of, of 
a normal ship versus the ghost ship. If you die, you still stay in the game. And that's great. The other part that, that I like is that you are programming your movement. But basically, it's kind of... The movement, it's... I wouldn't say it's limited, but it is limited because there is not much movement. You basically move there or there, th that way or the other way and so on and just shoot or, or, or try to kill and it's a little bit too random and there are different events. It, it's lighthearted and maybe for such a long setup and for so many components to find the game to be so lighthearted, it was kind of disappointing. Uh, I'm sure Tom Vassell will do the review of Dead Man the Bloons at some point, or he already did. I don't know, just look at the Dice Store cha channel. So I talked to him about this game as well. So, But I mean, like, I was underwhelmed. I, I was expecting more, but maybe I went there with different or, or with wrong expectations, and it should be the lighthearted game. Maybe I will try it again if somebody has it. So. It was, it was fine. At least I had fun playing with the Dice Store team. I, I played with Jason, Sam, and Tom, and I won. Yes. So that's really cool. So eventually, yeah, um, Wednesday went like that. I, I think, I think this, this Dead Man's The Blue Play was on Wednesday and not Thursday. But basically, on Thursday, it was the first day. It was so packed, extremely packed. The whole three was just, oh, I like... For those different days, I avoided whole three. I, I just avoided it because, like, at some point I had to go there. I had some meetings and such. So, but eventually I tried to avoid it as much as possible because it was just too crowded. Then whole one was extremely crowded. Whole two was maybe a bit less, but it was in whole two. Um, I um, people from Dice, where I worked before, um, they told me that I can keep my, if I buy games, I can keep my games at, at their booth because they have a large booth. So um, I could keep my games while I'm roaming around so I don't have to carry them. So that's really, really cool. So that's why I did basically. Uh, the stacks went longer and longer, but eventually, yeah. Uh, Thursday, I still didn't feel like I want to film much. I don't know why. I had some appointments and I went to see the math tray because I needed to get one game from there. So yeah, there, there are lots of different things happening. It's I'm not gonna talk about the first day as like what what did I go to see, what did I buy. Uh, eventually, I'm just roaming around trying to uh, gather all the pre-orders at once so I can ship them uh, as soon as possible because uh, there is a shipping booth as well. Yes, um, but on first day, I was roaming around. At the end of the day, I was roaming around the dice store booth because. Behind the Dice Store booth, there's Quality Beast booth, and and I I made really good friends, and especially like this Essen, I talked a lot with Dylan from uh, Quality Beast. Uh, they are doing the Seize the Beam. Um, it will be in Kickstarter. I will most likely, or almost like, I will definitely preview the game. Uh, I do the I will do the Kickstarter preview, and they will have Towers of the Sun. I'm not gonna talk about when it will come on Kickstarter because it's just because I I suggested for them when should they start the uh, the other Kickstarter um, because the Seize the Bean is the first Kickstarter it, it, it's gonna be in uh, January so talk about Towers of the Sun by the way both uh, previews uh, will be up on the channel uh, for Towers of the Sun really cool small looking um, uh, abstract it's abstract, but it's really cool looking. Um, yeah, game with I don't know what that like the, like a going up 3D kind of a towers and there are some crystals, but those were probably a product components. But I don't know what will be exactly there in the game. But the art looks really stylish, cool. I like it. I like the idea of of kind of uh, building up the towers and kind of finding each fighting each other for the control of them and so on. And yeah, just a neat idea. So, and seize the bean. Anyway, so by the end of the day, I went uh, to Dice Tower booth and uh, I told Sam again and we talked and Sam is like, do you want to come with us? I'm like, again? Okay. So <laughs> it's the second time I went uh, to the dinner with the Dice Tower team and then we went to the uh, Greek restaurant. Um, and I sat across the... Uh, table uh, across Kenny and me and Kenny we took the 
the grill plate for two. It was said like a grill plate for two. And so when they brought uh, the grill plate for two, I think like enorm I don't I don't know how much you eat and I tried to eat more than I usually eat in Essen because you know um, I'm you know a little guy I should eat more and <laughs> I did my best but this plate was at least for four I mean there are eight diff eight pieces of meat normal pieces of meat lots of fries and huge plate of salad so i mean i can eat maybe two pieces of meat and some french fries and some salad because it's like already two pieces of meat is already uh, was maybe around 250 or 300 grams of meat so and that that was a lot of meat i mean wow um it was nice i liked it uh i there was gyros and such so i tried the greek um and then there was like a they took some appetizers and some appetizers are really really good there as well so i like that anyway so that was another dinner with the dice story team uh, but eventually on the other days i was just um in the evening i was at the hotel uh, having a drink, uh, playing sometimes. So I played some games. I played some games with um, with Tiffany as well, uh, with John from John Gets Games. And um, I'm sorry, it's slipping from my mind. I don't remember all the people. I'm very sorry about that. But anyway, so eventually, um, yeah, Thursday was packed. Friday, I had some. I had some meetings on Friday as well. So. And I played at the hotel and Saturday and Sunday and so on. So mostly I was at the hotel. Oh no, um, I think on Friday I went uh, with the Dice team uh, for a dinner. Yeah, at some of the days. So anyway, I played some. I played this, the sunny day. I played the team play, the small games. Then I played the Café Fatal. Um, so the team play is a small card game with teams. And we won with John. Great job. Uh, <laughs> but it was like, you know, like a casual game for me, so it's not really my style. Uh, then the sunny, was it sunny day, I think, was the game's name? It was, it seemed, I don't know who's design. it seemed to be like a, an Asian game. Anyway, it was really, it was really nice, to be honest. Um, it was a tile laying game where you kind of put the tiles down and grab the tiles around you if you connect there are like the tiles have different connections in the corners in on the sides so you have to you want to, to connect that tile that you're putting down with other tiles so you can grab them and then build up your connections at your own kind of tableau and score more points so it's very abstract it's very small but it's kind of clever game I liked it so I'm gonna look it up at some point maybe I will buy it or maybe I'll buy it for someone else that I think suits him or her well anyway and then uh, we also played Café Fatal uh, I don't know what what evening so I'm I don't remember I'm I think this video will last long anyway <laughs> I'm sorry about that but I'm just talking and that's babbling and just it's it's long anyway so eventually yeah uh, Café Fatal is a dice rolling and like an area control game where you are rolling your dice and then you're choosing one uh, particular number and then you're putting your dice uh, into one of the locations to grab the pizza slices whatever you know and it's it, it was just boring um, no don't the, I think it, it's really good game it's a really good game for casual gamers maybe non gamers it's really easy to teach and learn cool but for me even King Domino uh, is more exciting because here, I mean, in King Domino you have kind of, kind of you have more, ch I think you have more choices, sort of. But I mean, in, in Café Fatal you are rolling dice and eventually you kind of think that you have some choices. And I know I'm not against the randomness, so, but anyway, you kind of feel like you, yeah, maybe I have the choices, but these choices are so obvious and so, so boring, just, you know... It's like, oh, I'm going to put here because that's the only thing, that's the only way I can put the dice here or whatever, you know, it's, I, I don't, I have, don't have much to say about it. It's just roll the dice and put them somewhere and just 
do whatever you want and wait for the game to be over because it's so boring. Anyway, Café Fatal. That will be a really negative review, uh, to be honest. Anyway, so we, uh, we also played, by the way, we also played uh, Sakura. Uh, the one that I'm, I'm going to talk about it anyway, I have it with me here. Um, we played Muse and we played Ilos. I pre-ordered Ilos and I got Ilos and I shipped Ilos and I played Ilos after I shipped it. So basically, I shipped the game home, it hasn't arrived yet, so because two of my packages were kind of delayed um, and so I'm waiting for that. But I got to play another person's copy. I think it was Peter's copy from Tabletop Together. Anyway. It's a nice title. Uh, it looks really cool. It reminds me a little bit of Archipelago exploring tiles. But eventually... So basically you have, you have cards in your hand. And what you're doing with the cards, cards have different actions. And cards have costs. So basically the cost of the card is kind of discarding other cards from your hand. So for example, this card's cost is two. So that means if I play this card, I have to discard other two cards from my hand. So, and there are some more expensive and less expensive. You're putting down ships around the islands to put the meeples down on the resources to get them as income. And there is that cool aspect of stock market kind of where you are influencing the price of different goods. Eventually, when you get income, these are the points basically at the end of the game. And if you gather kind of uh, the greater income you have, the more points eventually you will uh, get um, each round. So that's really cool. But... I kind of felt like it's maybe too light. It it's not that many choices, and I don't I don't know. I have played only once, but I'm afraid the replayability won't be there for me. I mean, like with some games, I don't care about replayability. It's like I like to play them all over again because it's really cool. I like it, you know. With this one, I feel like there is a need for everyone to to get those, uh, because basically at some point it's random when you're uh, taking the cards from the draw deck, uh, it's quite random. Um, so you want to get those ship cards, because if you get the ship card, that means that you can put the ship down and you can explore a new land. Really cool, but also, you at the end of your turn, you're going to draw cards. You're going to draw as many cards as, uh, was it three cards, plus the number of the ships that you have. On the islands so you want to get those ships out fast because you want to get more cards into your hand because some cards are quite expensive you want to play this card I have to discard four cards but if I have a total of five cards that means I'm gonna do only one action on my turn and that's that's bad I mean like it's it's not exciting you know and the other person will do boom 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 he has more things to do he has more choices and he will do better and that's that's the problem I had with the game so I want to play it again I want to see if maybe I approach it the wrong way and maybe it's like it is random kind of so it's maybe I should be cool with that but anyway Illus I'm maybe I'm gonna review the game as well so anyway I'm I have to try it again but I was underwhelmed I was disappointed by the game a little bit um, because I feel like the 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 starting strategy should be the same for everyone and that's not exciting just Get the ships out as fast as possible. But if you will not get the ship cards from the deck, because it's a common deck and you all draw from that deck, then you're stuck. Then you're stuck with your small uh, hand size. I, I don't know. Anyway. So, um, I'm babbling a lot already. I'm sorry for that. It's going to be a very long video. But I, <laughs> I'm going to get, get to the games very soon. Anyway. So, yeah. I'll play different games. I don't remember uh, what we played else. Um, we we played, uh, we played Harvest Dice as well, but I'm going to review Harvest Dice, so, and I'm going to talk about it briefly. Anyway, yeah. So the Essen went well, uh, in my opinion. I was very tiring. It didn't go as well with the videos. I didn't shoot many videos, but, but I talked to many people, and I, I realized that I have way more friends that I thought I have uh, in the board game industry, and that's really cool. That's what I like. Anyway. Let's not babble too much about, about me and uh, what I did in Essen. Maybe talk about some games that I got. So these are the games that I got in my luggage and my hand luggage. So 
most of the games are still coming. I have a total, I, I wrote it down, there should be a total of uh, 46 items uh, for me. I mean, I mean, like, eventually I brought more games, but some, some of them are for my friends. So, <laughs> eventually I brought over 50. Like, that's why I shipped a total of three boxes. Oh, sorry. Some of the games came uh, in the luggage and some of the games came in the small box that I shipped as well. The third box came very fast. The other two boxes are still in transit. Anyway, yeah. So, the first game is um, Farlight. I got it from the auction, uh, SSP auction from Math Trade. Um, I don't know why, but it interested me because of the... Um, you're kind of build, basically building the spaceship and I like the, like you're kind of building your, um, what do you call the space corporation and, and you trying to get more knowledge and it's kind of scientific and to be honest, I just don't remember why, why I wanted this game, but at some point I just wanted this game. Oh yeah, it's designed by King's design, designer of King's Forge. Yeah, a game streamlined game of spaceship building, resource gathering, and bidding wars. So what I remember is that I really like the idea of uh, of kind of building your space station of those different, and they kind of connect, and so on. So far light, I got it, but I don't really remember why. Who cares? Okay, I'm gonna play it and see if it's good. Um, so then I have peak oil. Uh, I got this, this was my SM pickup uh, from the Kickstarter. So this should be an economic game, but kind of streamlined and you are playing future corporations, um, investing like, because the oil uh, becomes rare, expensive, so you are investing money into future technologies, kind of trying to become a really uh, rich company anyway. So, and there should be some take that as a no, I don't know. Because looming ahead and you need to, okay, last drops of oil, yeah. So anyway, the idea is cool, the art is really cool, I like it. And I kind of like those midweight economic games lately, so I'm really hoping for a great game here, Peak Oil. So what's this? Oh, this is for the Queen Domino, but Queen Domino will come in a box soon. Then we have Plank in Space, so... I left the original Clank with the expansion uh, with Felina, so, and I thought like, I'm gonna get Clank in space, because I heard that Clank um, in space is a um, little bit more gamery than you, Clank. I'm not, uh, I'm not keen on space themed games, but um, I don't know, I just wanted this game because I wanted to get Clank anyway. Get, get it back and I thought like instead of just getting the original maybe I should get the clank in space So I'm really hoping this is as good as the original clank maybe even better. So that's clank in space Then we have Xi'an So this was at the mother good booth, but eventually the it's surf, sur, Surfing meeple and pendragon game studio it should be some kind of Italian company uh, It looks really cool and the components on the back. They look really cool the production value is okay, uh, some tiles are warping, and the rules, they are a little bit confusing. So, the problem with, with Xi'an, so I, we, I played it, I played it in essence, so it's, it's opened already. So first of all, there was production issue, I didn't have enough of the neutral miniatures here for the Rakota army. But eventually, this is, yeah, you're building your Terracotta army, and it's kind of abstract, but it's... It's kind of streamlined, it's medium to light game. On a lighter side, I would say. And you can play it with your family as well, I'm sure. Um, there's not very much going on in this game. I didn't like it at two players. Uh, there's n because which, the board is the same, but there's not much competition with two players. I think it's a, it should be a really good game with four players. So I'm gonna try with four. I was a little bit disappointed because I was really looking to this game. Um, and also the production value. I, I thought maybe like Madagod is printing this, but it seems like the box is not a good quality, not so good quality. But the, some tokens and miniatures and such, they're really cool. But 
the 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 um, the floor tiles are are like a cardstock, but really cheap. Uh, it it has this linen finish, but a cheap one, and they are warping terribly, and that bothers me so much. So anyway, yeah. Um, in this game, you are. Um, maybe we're gonna review this game. So just gonna see it soon. Yeah, but it's kind of set collection. You are playing cards from your hand. One is for the initiative. One of is for the action. You are um, putting the neutral. You're building the neutral statues and then coloring them into your own color to get the kind of a, the area control to get the majority in that area and score points. Uh, the colors change and blah blah blah, and you're building up the temple in front of you as well to get extra actions, one-time uses, and some maybe end-game conditions. And you are uh, grabbing some uh, weapons for the Terracotta army so you can get more points eventually. So. Um, she and I'm hoping for a better experience with four players. Then uh, we have a review copy, and I think I think the it's it's a demo. But it's not like it's a full production copy, but uh, it was for the demo uh, in Essen from um, Wolf Design. Um, so this is a Latvian uh, company, and this should be a tabletop MOBA. Um, the, th the thing about why I took this game, because usually I don't play such games, but I was curious about it. Um, they said they want me to preview their Warp Gate that was cancelled Kickstarter. It's going to be back on Kickstarter in January. So I'm, I have Warp Gate as well, the prototype for Warp Gate. I'm going to preview it. And then like, do you want to review this game as well? I was like, yeah, I want to try it and I, I will review it. So... And they gave me a small like expansion pack as well. So anyway, so this is Guards of Atlantis, uh, MOBA style. I don't know much about it. We're gonna see. Uh, I wanna play it first and then see. Then the game that I already know that I already reviewed, and that's when I dream. But I reviewed the older edition, um, and I liked it. Um, I, Alina didn't like it as much, so eventually we got rid of the older copy. But the new one looks so gorgeous with this 3D bed and such. So I don't know, it just looks amazing. The, 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 the new edition is like a fancy kind of deluxe edition. And I thought like at some point now I have a really small... I, I sold very many games uh, because I didn't want to have a too big collection anymore. Um, right now I had like around 60 titles uh, before Essen, but now I'm going to have more than 100, around 100 and more. So I'm gonna maybe sell more games, but eventually, when I dream, uh, some of you is closing eyes, and and the others have, are imps or or fairies. I don't know here they are they aren't called imps, but who cares anyway? Bad and good. So and we are giving one word clues, and that person who has his eyes closed is kind of dreaming. He should guess the word, but the who, the ones who are bad imps. They want to give the clue that that kind of um, takes away from the right answer, and fairies try to help the dreamer. So it's a light-hearted game uh, with cool art, and I just thought that I don't have many games of of that kind of a genre anymore. So I should get them back and get more of them because now I sometimes I play games with people who are not maybe don't want to play a more serious game or are not into serious games, so this should be a really perfect fit for them. That's when I dream. Then, um, another one that's... Uh, that's where <laughs> in Atlantic Congress that I talked about is that I, I was there, I was there uh, talking to... Yeah, I, I was with the Dice Tower and there with the Dice Tower and eventually I'm, I saw Daryl Andrews, so uh, we talked in Gen Con before already, and there was, I don't remember that lady, I'm, I'm very sorry, uh, lady's name, but Daryl was like, Daryl Andrews, the one who, for example, designed uh, Sagrada, he's like, oh, this is Ilya, he's a cool YouTuber and blah, 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 doing his channel and such, so, and she had a, um, a bag with that game, and she's like, oh, really? Do you want to review Apocrypha? Uh, Ap Apocrypha. So, and there was Mandy Hutchison uh, from the Dice Tower. So, Mandy's like, yeah, it's a really cool game, but the rules are 
like bad, really, really bad. Uh, but if I will watch their playthrough, I will probably understand the game. And I was, I was like, it's not like my style of game. It's a deep adventure card game, like a Pathfinder adventure card game with deep story, full story. But on the other hand, lately I've been so I, I really wanted to. Uh, get games with, with a lot of story and such. I want to try them out. I want to try more games with stories, longer games. I don't care. I just want to try different stuff. So there is just one bend here, but I don't care about that. So it's a new copy, uh, basically, of Apocrypha. So I got it for review. I think maybe it's extremely complicated, but eventually somebody told me if I get through this, uh, through the rules, then I'm gonna enjoy the game, so why not? Uh, that's Apocrypha, Apocrypha, the adventure card game. Then, still this game. Okay, let it be. It's whatever. No, yes, um, Ambition. Um, this is kind of a, like a masquerade type game where you have those hidden roles and you are trying to grab the money, basically loot and, and win the game. And you have those different roles, you're trying to kind of a deduction game. Um, I don't know much about it, but there was one person at the Mo Ideas uh, game design booth and he's like, oh, I know you, I know your reviews, so, you know, I have a rare game from South Africa and I think it is rare game because it's an action game, I haven't ever, like, the production quality is, is bad, I mean, really cheap, extremely cheap, but I was like, it's cool, I don't know, South African obscure game, I don't know why, but it's just... Like, wow, I, I want to try it. So he's like, he's like, so here you go. If maybe you want to review it, maybe you want to play it. This is a rare copy of Ambition. I'm like, okay, let's do that. So I, I think I should do the review for that because I think it's interesting for people to know what games they do in South Africa. So uh, then we have Shadowscape, another review copy. Um, I wasn't, I saw it on Kickstarter, I wasn't keen on it, but eventually, yeah, I, I think the card-based lighter dungeon crawl game should be for me, so I want to try it, I want to see if it's any good. Uh, I previewed it uh, as well, it sounds interesting, um, I'm not into Mistfall, but uh, I hope this rulebook is much better anyway, and uh, Kuba gave me all the expansions, the miniatures and such, so I'm going to have the full experience. Uh, with mini miniatures, and yeah, it it looks a quite a big game for a small box, a dungeon crawl with lots of cards. So this is Shadowscape for the review. Then we have In Between, and I'm gonna review this game, so I'm not gonna talk much about it, but one player plays Creature, the other player plays the Human, and you're trying to get the people on, like, as a creature on your side, bad side, and as a human on good side, you know, and it's an asymmetric game with, with each one of you, two-player game, you have different decks and kind of different actions, but they're evolving around this round uh, table and those different people you're trying to drag into your own dimension. So I'm going to review this game anyway, so it's from Board and Dice, um, my good friends from Board and Dice, um, Philip and Renish, and by the way, um, there was also Christian Kurla, I didn't talk about that, but Christian Kurla, who designed Pies of Time, uh, we talked to him a lot, I mean, it was, he's a really cool guy, um, it was nice to see him again, I talked to him like two essence ago, so eventually he showed me, I saw some of his prototypes and uh, Borden Dice showed me one of the other prototypes and I liked their approach, I mean, Christian Kurla will have a really interesting game coming up. Um, and Philip from Board and Dice showed me the other game, which is not from Christian Kurla, from I think from Italian designers, but I, I, I liked it. It was really simple, but it was cool with real-time aspects. So, I'm not going to talk much about it because I don't know how much I can, I can talk about it anyway. So, there's also Pocket Mars. We already reviewed the game, but um, I got the full production copy now. Be before I had the prototype copy. So, then, by the way, this is, this is a fun story. So, I was uh, on Wednesday, or I think it was Wednesday, yeah. I was at the... Uh, yeah, that's that's right before I played Santa Maria. I was at the Dice Server booth talking to people, and there was... Um, I'm sorry, I'm so bad with the names to remember him. 
But ASIC, he's from Quick Simple Fun Games, and he's like, I don't know, I started talking to him, I don't know why, or he started talking to me, I don't know why, but anyway. Um, and we started talking about, he said, like, do you want to see a game called Muse? And they want to see that other game as well? And I'm like, yeah, sure, show me. Um, I have time. And then we eventually talked, like, uh, he said, have, have I played any of the quick, simple, fun games titles? I said, I have Noxford, but it's from the last test, and so I need to review, by the way, Noxford as well. Uh, but, yeah. But um, I, was, I said that I'm really curious about Veggie Garden. I really wanted to try it, but it wasn't so easy to get it um, in Europe right now. Uh, maybe it is now, but it wasn't before. Maybe it was out of stock. So he's like, I'm going to give you uh, Veggie Garden. So here I have, and I said, if you give me the copy for free, then I will have to review it. Because I, I don't want to... I, I feel like I have a need to review the game if somebody gives me the game. So, so yeah, I'm going to review Veggie Garden, although I think it's a known game. But it's cool. I, I wanted to have it. I wanted to try it. So then we have Harvest Dice. And this is also for a review that Grey Fox Games gave me. Uh, it's a small, like a roll and write game. You're um, rolling dice and picking them, drafting them, and then kind of writing down the symbols on your score pad and trying eventually to score more points. Um, I will talk about it in the review uh, when I do the review. So, Harvest Dice. Uh, then we have another small uh, Mercatoris. I got it for free. Um, thanks to my friend uh, Piotr from Poland uh, because he's friends with Taylor Games. Yeah, but I mean, maybe I will review it. So I didn't get it as a review copy. I mean, just I just got it. It's a small game. It's a really cheap game anyway. This reminded me, I played with, with John Gates, uh, with John from John Gates Games. Um, this reminded me of, or both of us reminded of Bonanza. So you are playing down the cards, but there's a cool mechanism. I liked it. So you are kind of playing the card in the center and grabbing some cards from the center. So you kind of, you give... Out a card to grab more cards from the center and eventually you want to get the same color so you you can play them down and um, get the uh, get the more points at the end but you're kind of it is kind of like Bonanza eventually at the end of the round or the game you are selling uh, all the stuff you have gathered all the set collection and when you're selling you sometimes need to pay a tax, so you need to give up a card for free and then sell the other card, so on. So, small needs, maybe I will review it, who knows, but right now I have a really big review queue of around 20 review copies, plus I will have more Kickstarter previews than I eventually thought, so you're gonna see all that. Anyway, so then we have Nomads. I really like the, I pre-ordered the game, I really like the idea of Nomads, uh, you're around the campfire and trying to uh, tell the stories to each other, but I mean, it's not like that, eventually it's like a set collection game, um, it's in the story pieces and blah blah blah, but it's extremely gorgeous, um, I really like how it looks, so check it out on BGG, how it looks, it's, it looks so amazing, the, the cards look just gorgeous, and that's why I got this game, it's just gorgeous, I don't know if it's any good, but... I'm hoping for the best. It should be a light game. Then we have Muse that I played. And now I like this one. Uh, and yeah, it's a spoiler. But I'm going to do the review. So it's the other game that uh, the person from Quick Simple Fun Games gave uh, to me. Um, so I could review it. I, I like it. Um, it's a smash between Mysterium and Dixit. So, but there are some like... There are hint cards and those kind of dream cards, like Dixit cards type cards. Eventually, we're playing in teams, and uh, one team is giving us the kind of a uh, the the, the uh, hint card and the dreamer card, and our team, for example, if we are the guessing ones this round, our team needs to pick one person who is a muse. Muse will look at the at the cards the opponents gave. And the hint the opponents gave and try to think how he can like basically those hint cards are, are telling you how you should give a hint about a particular dream card so it can be name an unfictional building structure or monuments uh, hum a melody 
name a published book, uh, do a wave your hand somehow, you know, to, so basically what, it's like a, we're working together. So the muse, he cannot tell exactly what's the card, but he has to somehow hint to us towards that card, uh, Dixit type card. And what, what, what's cool is that, uh, yeah, there are different like kind of a hints that you can give out because it, these are restrictions on, on what you should do when you give out the hints. The cool part is that then uh, there is a total of six cards given out. The, the muse, he doesn't know what the other five cards are. So basically when he looked at this one, he gives it back. All the cards are shuffled and laid down like in Dixit. And now he gives us a hint and maybe he does like this, you know, with it, because the hint was to give a clue with the hands, and whatever, um, or strike a pose, or whatever. So, and we are trying to now find from his hint, our we as teammates trying to find what's the card, what's the real card from those six cards. And yeah, it's I'm gonna review it anyway, but it's a really cool game. I I like the idea about this one, and it looks gorgeous and. I'm gonna tell you more exactly how it works when I do the review. I'm sorry, maybe I'm just a little bit tired. Then we have Sakura, or Sakura. Um, this is a trick-taking game. And now, I'm not into trick-taking games. This one looks really cool and neat. So in this one, you don't wanna win the trick. If you win the trick, you're kinda getting negative points. But you also you are also getting more money and you can buy specialists or special cards with the money that can help you manipulate. So you're kind of, you have to play, each round you have to play onto two decks. One is an increasing uh, and one is decreasing decks. So basically you have to play a smaller number or, um, and you have to match the colors as well. So, so there's, there's that. But if you play the exactly same number, then the color doesn't matter. So there's the tricky part about that. I like that. Um, I played it. I liked it. Uh, not all players liked it much, but I liked it. And it's cool. It's light and just a very interesting, uh, neat um, approach to a trick taking that I should usually not like, but I liked it. Then, of course, my number one most anticipated game, Unlock. I already played two scenarios and the second scenario with the submarine was really, f I, I liked, it was really thematic, it was really hard. I played the first one solo, I finally tried the solo but it was underwhelming. Um, as a solo game, maybe I just don't like to play those escape type room uh, games solo because I want to discuss with people and if I'm stuck, if I'm, if I'm stuck, I don't, I don't have any other person to discuss it with. So I was like, nah, whatever. The house on, on the hill was the first. I haven't played the Tony Paul's Treasure, but unlock. It's amazing. Um, what can I say? The second scenario was really, really hard. I uh, but and the third should be even harder. So I don't know. Maybe it's just me being stupid. But anyway, uh, you know about unlock. So that was most, was my most anticipated game. And I love to play those games. Then we have 1920 Wall Street. It's a review copy uh, from Looping Games. We reviewed their uh, 1911. We didn't like it. And also reviewed Topum, which I adore. It's one of my, it's in my top 20 of all time. I just adore Topum. And that's why I was really interested. And this should be in a stock market game. The cards, a smaller box, but should be a neat stock. I read, I read the rules already, and I'm interested to try this one. It, it sounds neat. It sounds interesting. The rules are a bit confusing, though. But, I mean, who cares? It's two to five players. So I just, at some point, I'm going to try it. I'm going to review it, and, and so on. So stock market game. I'm always interested in some new stock market games. Then, I'm not going to show you, I have, here I have Altiplano and the Age of Thieves uh, expansion. Um, but I gave, gave my copy of Age of Thieves uh, to my friends, so they could play it more. Um, because eventually I thought that I would not play without them anyway, but they should play it without me. So that's why I gave up my copy and I bought the expansion for them. But also, the other game I played... 
and it's really light and I, I knew that it's light it's it's kind of you are selecting kind of different roles uh, I'm sorry different places you want to go to you're, you're doing it simultaneously it's about Western and you're going to those and if more than one person goes to one location uh, then you're gonna resolve the duel, uh, the, the the battle, and play the battle cards, blah blah blah, and eventually you are just trying to get the most money. Um, and when the pile of money from the center runs out, you're gonna see whoever has the most money. And if you go alone, you can do the action of that location in full. And yeah, it's it is like a party type game. I would say it's very light. Um, I liked it. Um, I wasn't. It wasn't a wow for me, but I, it was it was good. I liked it, and yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna review it. So it's a review copy. So check it out soon. So and the last one. Now this one, I bought it on the last day because I was like, I don't know if I want this game. I don't know if I want this game. But the mention was like, everybody's talking about this game, so I want to get it. And it's a tale of pirates. Oh. um... And now I read the rules as well. I didn't play it yet. So it's a real-time um, cooperative... It should, be co it should be cooperative game. I think, yeah, it is. Yeah, it should be. With really cool pieces. A really nice insert. I like how the insert is laid out. Um, it's with sand timers. It's a real-time with the app and how the app interacts with you and how how you play together and you're trying to basically go through different uh, missions and there are different chapters kind of so they are sealed so as you go further and further into the game you will open kind of new like kind of legacy but it's like i mean you will get new pieces to play with and most likely it will make the game even harder and harder introduce you some to some new rules and such so um it sounds really interesting. Uh, I I read the rules and I'm really excited to to try this game and that's Tale of Pirates. And that's it for now. And I'm, yeah, I'm I want to say I'm sorry for the long video, but that's 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 the SM vlog. It's it's always really really long. And if you watch till the end, then you're crazy. Anyway, <laughs> but this is only the start. Um, as I told in Twitter. Around 45, 46 kilograms of games is, yeah, 46, is, is coming, it's coming, it's, it should be here in front on Friday, two more boxes, and then we're going to do the part two with those two boxes, kind of unboxing of those two boxes and showing you more games that I brought and talking about them. So anyway, thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, uh, to the Twitter, to Instagram to Facebook, uh, we have so many different channels. And of course, um, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. You can find all the links. If you don't like the monthly subscriptions, you can always um, uh, try the uh, PayPal. We have the PayPal link for one-off sums as well. If you want to support the channel, I would really appreciate that because it, it is a lot of work to, to do here, even if I'm just babbling right now, but eventually I'm doing with the reviews that I'm doing, with all the other videos that I'm doing, it, it is a lot of work. And it just might not, I might not um, be able to continue the channel uh, if I don't have enough money for living, so that means that I have to do more job, the other job, and that's taking away the time to review the games. Anyway, thank you, we see you in part two of um, Essenspiel. Uh, 2017 vlog and haul. Anyway, thanks. Bye bye. This channel is sponsored by Osprey Games. Check them out at ospreypublishing.com.